The following thoughts on Hoppy Hour represent Brian Hoppy and Pastis. Listener discretion is advised. Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Hoppy Hour. He's the voice of a generation that got screwed by the baby boomers. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour starts in four, three, two. Hoppy, Hoppy, Hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour with Hoppy and Alessia. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. What's going on, Alessia? How are you? Can I say the F word? Yeah, what's going on? Why do you want to say the F word? (laughs) Because it's so fitting. Ryan Hoppy gives no fucks. <laughs> Why? What did I do? <laughs> I'm like, let me see the time. Okay, actually, I'm 11 minutes late. That's a lot. Yeah. And, and he doesn't even make eye contact with me. Because I'm waiting for us to talk on air. It's something I've learned I in radio. I love it. I literally live for this. I'm just trying You're to You're a give- single mom doing a podcast. What am I expecting from you? To be on time? You're not making 500000 with this? Oh, my gosh. How no, are you? It's, it's been like 12 days. I have not seen you in forever. I feel like it's been a lifetime since I've seen you. I know. 12 days yeah. and um, 40 minutes and 37 seconds. I've been counting down. I've just missed you so much. That's very good. Uh, I saw <laughs> this in the news right here. Oh, well, I first, love your shirt. first, first. Before I even get into the the news, first of all, you like my shirt. It says Hoppy. Oh my Hoppy. gosh, where did you get that? Jay Rutcher from ninety five three WDAE had it made for me. I'm like, taking a picture of you and we're posting it. As yeah. our, okay, just while okay. we're doing this, this smile. is great. Well, here's the breaking news that I have about Hoppy Hour. I have some breaking news, Alessia, that I want to get into. Oh. I want to talk to you about it. Talk to me. We have picked up a new sponsor for Hoppy Hour. Amazing. Mitra 9 Kava and Kratom Beverages is now a part of Hoppy Hour in this way. You go to tinyurl.com slash hoppy mitra. That's the little little shortcut I made for everybody. If you go to tinyurl.com slash hoppy mitra and you and use keyword hoppy, you save 20%. Wow. That's so exciting. Yay, yay, for, yay yeah. for hoppy hour and yay for our listeners that are going to save 20%. So back in August, I got the most drunk I've ever been in my life. That's drunk. Like very drunk, like a day hangover, a day and a half hangover. It was awful. Oof. And I had an epiphany with myself that I just needed to quit drinking because I just let these days I was given be ruined by a hangover. Like it's fun in the moment when you're getting drunk mm-hmm. and you're vomiting at the club, but then at some point it gets old. Right. Yes, I and can't. Back in August, I just quit drinking. I mean, I will drink like a Jack and Coke at a party, but I quit drinking just like during the week. I have lost 30 pounds, and the thing that has helped me achieve this success, Alessia, yes. is Mitra 9, Kava, and Kratom, because I have drank it as a replacement, and I drink it when I go to Dignitary Tea and Kava House, brought to you by Ian Beckles, so it saved my life, so I'm not one of those radio guys that's just given like a live read and doesn't know what they're saying, it just records it. I can speak from the heart about this product I when I tell it. you they're the best, Alessia. Well, first of all, since I've known you, you have raved about this, so you genuinely, it's part of your lifestyle. I've seen it, you're given a piece of paper and you do a commercial and pretend to care about the company. It happens in radio. I'm sorry I exposed the secret, but I could <laughs> actually, you know, this is something I can relate to. This is something that bleeds me. Right, absolutely. And you have you have literal health health benefits from it. I had the funniest thing happen last week. Tell me. I was having the best morning ever. This was the day that you had to cancel on happy hour. Ugh. And no, no, no. I'm Every- late and I cancel. Okay. Don't hire me. <laughs> you are the worst. Uh, I was, I'm just kidding. People are going to be like, wow, you're being rude to your female co-host. I'm kidding. Relax. She literally shows up late. <laughs> I can tell her. No, I'm just I kidding. did bring you a coffee. I, I drink like half of it already. I'm so glad. So last week I was outside <laughs> and uh, I was like looking up at the sky and appreciating the moment. <laughs> 
and looking up at the moon as it was setting. And I went back into my apartment. And right as I went into my apartment, I'm going, we're going to record happy hour. It's going to be the best day ever. <laughs> when, as I'm walking up, someone had their dog crap out and didn't clean up the dog crap. And I just took this big, oh, I just walked on dog crap. Oh. And the rest of my day sucked. After that, everything else was awful. I, I got mean, a little sick. It was just like up to that point, I couldn't have had a better morning. And I walked on dog crap because someone didn't clean it up in this white trash area. And all of a sudden, I'm like, God damn it. I just knew I went podcast over, day over. Might as well die. Hmm. It was quite the moment. Imagine that. And I have to figure out how to clean it up. I have to get like a special, because I, I literally walked in dog crap. Yeah. And they were these Kyrie Irving shoes, which maybe that is fitting that a Kyrie Irving shoe would walk in dog crap. You know what I mean? I did this the other day. What? But I stepped in my, so my neighbor's cat, first of all, was like just, I, I have a couple of stories about my neighbor's cat. Okay. First, it pooped on my driveway and I was taking out the trash and I'm like in the morning, like in my PJs, like taking the trash out, like barefoot. I love to be one with the grass and my lawn. And anyways, walking into the trash can, I stepped in cat, like you were, you had a shoe on. I just stepped in cat poop, bare foot. And that sound when you know it's like gracing your skin and you go, there's no way that's God's crap. It was disgusting. And yeah. then also this cat, I have like my laundry rooms outside of our house. So it's like um, attached to the house, but outside. So I keep the door open, the back door open, and then I keep the laundry door open. I'm kind of like going back and forth. And then anyways, our neighbor's cat comes in and I'm in the living room. <laughs> It's nighttime. I'm ready for bed. And it's just like sitting in my living room staring at me. I was like mortified. But anyways, um, yeah, that's all I have. I stepped in cat poop. So at least it was your shoe and not your foot. Yeah. It was just like, it just represented the day. It was very bizarre. But then it, why do they on. say what? that? Why do they say that like bird poop is good luck? It's to make you feel better. So like. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to interrupt you. I was that dignitary. I mean, I interrupt you a lot and you do the same. Yeah. I was that dignitary. And we got to work on that. I was that dignitary last week. <laughs> and this bird just took this crap on my head. Okay, this is too many times for you. This it was many- unbelievable. And I went, that's not water. I don't know what it uh, is. Was it on a hat or a head? A head. It was on, it touched your head. Yeah, it was, it was a great moment. And it's been like twice this year. Uh-oh. Was this year the bird crap? The universe is telling you some shit. <laughs> it is telling me shit. 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-494-6773. Speaking of things going to shit. Yes. Megan Fox has returned to Instagram with a clear message for those who think they know the details of her relationship status with Machine Gun Kelly. The actress shared her first post on the platform since deleting her account amid breakup rumors surrounding her and the rocker, shutting down all allegations that cheating is a factor. Cheating's totally a factor. Oh, but because they're saying cheating's not a factor, we're going to believe whatever they say. I mean, get out of here. You know how hard it must be to be famous and have to just be monogamous? Like, oh my God, you're on the road for a week and you just have girl after girl after girl after girl after girl throwing themselves on you at all times. And you have to be monogamous. What is that? I think eventually though, like for me personally, I would get, I would probably like go through that lifestyle a little bit. Yeah, it'd be fun. But then I'd be like, all right, I'm over it. And I want like a serious relationship. Like this is not fulfilling for me anymore. And that's where I would be. Just, you okay. know, when you're in an, <laughs> you know, when you're in a relationship and you're in an argument and you're like, this is probably the changing moment of the relationship. Yeah. You know, looking back on it, there was a certain argument that you're like, yeah, that was definitely when the relationship died. Imagine you're MGK or you're somebody famous and you have that point of a relationship and then you have nine girls going, I want to have sex with you tonight. Like that's why the cheating happens is it's so thrown in your face. No pun intended. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's ridiculous. Do you think that's what happened? Oh, he totally cheated on her. You think? Every rapper cheats. I've hung out with rappers. I don't know which occupation is less faithful to their wife, radio or rappers. Oh, my God. The biggest sluts ever. 
there has been no third-party interference in this relationship of any kind. That includes, but is not limited to, actual humans, DMs, AI bots, or succubus demons. While I do hate to rob you of running random baseless news stories that would have been much more accurately written by ChatGPT. I just found out about ChatGPT. Yeah, have you? What is that? I was oh wondering. Oh my God. I- I think this is the week of chat GBT. Let me look it up and explain it to you. So I'm at Dignitary hanging out with one of Ian's closest friends, Chris, who's this like 31-year-old uh, millennial I hang out with every day. He's a great dude. And we were hanging out, and I'm at the uh, front part of the bar at Ian's place, and I'm just doing work. I work on all my production for Pat and Aaron and everything at Dignitary. It's just a very creative spot. And he goes... So what's your chat GBT username? And I'm like, what's chat GBT? And he's like, chat GBT. And I'm like, what's that? And he goes, you don't know about chat GBT? Like saying you got to know about it. What is chat? It is a chat bot developed by OpenAI and launched in November 2022. It is built on top of A1's GBT family of large language models and has been fine-tuned using both supervised and reinforcement learning techniques. You know what it was like? Do you remember when you were on AIM like 15, 16 years ago and you could talk to that robot and be like, hey, what's up? How are you? Yes. It was like that. It was like... How can I, ma- like, I did this one. How can I make money with podcasts? And then it had like 19 examples of, I was like, oh my God, I never thought about that. Wow. It was crazy, dude. It was wild. It was nuts. And then it was like, uh, how to attract women. Blah, blah, blah. It's just things like that, you know? And you so just, you Pow. ask it questions like Google and it responds, like chats you? I used it for a minute and then I was so creeped out that I was like, I'm not ready for Ooh, the future. Ooh, I want to use it. Yeah, sign up for it. Okay. Is it cost money? No, it's free. Okay, I could do that. You'll get like parenting tips on there. Speaking of uh, AIM, right when you said AIM, I thought of my uh, username and I had Ugh. two that I just remembered that I What were your share. usernames? I was B-Ball Playa Playa 24. And then I also was, or was that my friend? And then I was you think you know, but the O's were zeros. Well, <laughs> yours were better than mine. What were yours? I wanted to be called Rhino when I was like in fourth to eighth grade. <laughs> I, know. I don't know why. I thought it was going to be like my radio name or something. Like someone like Man Cow in I Chicago. Like that. Yeah, You're sure. like extinct, which is so sad. Hi, Luna. <laughs> yeah. The cat's out. Okay. Well, here's the thing. I was called Rhino never, but I tried from fourth to eighth grade. To like get it to stick with people. I was trying so hard. Like I ran for a school dance commissioner in 2007 and said like vote for Rhino and I put it all around the school. Nobody voted for me. I heard I came in third out of fifth place, which kind of describes my life. Here's the thing though. He's pointing. I wanted Rhino to really take off. Like I remember there was a song by Jibs called I'm a Rhino bitch. I'm a Rhino bitch. And I'm like, that's going to be my theme song. We're playing it off to flip phones. I'm a Rhino bitch. Can that be our like intro to happy, happy hour? It's copywritten. I can't play it. So here's the thing. My usernames were, I had three just to get into contact with me. You never knew which account I was going to be on all four people I was talking to. Mm hmm. Relaxing Rhino 24 7. Oh my gosh. Chilling Rhino 24 7. Be quiet. <laughs> and I loved Adult Swim, and I do now. So Adult Swim 1993. And man, why were girls now looking at me and wanting to hang out with me with those, you know, such cute usernames? Right. Ugh. Why were the boys messaging me on B Ball Play 24? <laughs> You want to know? Oh man, should I discuss this? I don't care. He's dead. My dad did. Oh. The, my dad did the weirdest thing one time. Tell. My dad did this thing that was a little overprotective. And if he was alive today, I would confront him about it on a podcast. So I'm not really talking behind his back. But he was trying to protect me on social media, which I get it. I appreciate it. He made me delete my MySpace in like 2007. And then I just had Facebook. Like we would get into arguments where I would have season two of like the Simpsons and like the movie, the hangover. And he would like yell at me and preach about Jesus and like whatever. Mm -hmm. He archived my discussions on Facebook messenger from 2009 and had it in a folder. Oh, wow. And it was even cringier when you read the transcript. There was a girl I liked. Let's say her name was uh, in a folder. That's effort. 
Yeah, and let's say, uh, I, don't, I don't even want to say the girl's name. I, I had a huge crush on this girl. This girl made me realize that I was heterosexual as hell. Like, I was like, man, and she never liked me. I, I wonder why. Here's the thing. You saw the transcript, and it was like, hey, what's up? How's your night going? And they're like, and I'm you, and I'm like, oh, why are you keeping that, Dad? There's, there's no, there's nothing of use there. And there's no, that was when that you know the the girl was like, I'm gonna respond because I don't want him to kill himself, but I also don't want to. The right. and I'm you. Yeah, was like right. you might as well just never talk to that person again. It was again. like the K of today. No, K's not as bad. N M U means they just press three buttons and we're like, I just want him to survive in this planet called Earth. No effort given. At least with a K, you're addressing. Hey, do you want to hang out on Friday? Are you free at seven? K. Like it's a way to end discussions. There's never a positive when a girl gives you an N M U. She has no that. interest in. Oh yeah, if you want to get of a guy and you know dig them just say nmu and I'm they will unmatch it. i want to take us down memory lane where do you want to go down memory lane two things okay what? first of all my space used to have this super cool like you could pick your background of yes, your the html page, and i loved that and you can also have a song and mine were all emo oh you were like, emo oh heck yeah and so like when you got to the page the song started playing yeah that was cool. And then I just want to really quick jump to memory lane for the original Facebook. Not that there's a different Facebook, but right when Facebook launched, and this is not for the older folk, and this is not for the millennials. This is for like the originals that were on Facebook, aka our generation, which is, I don't even know the generation. So you just remind me. Okay. Why do you have? I can't remember you what generation I'm in. 82 to 97 is millennial. You are where the I'm most- I'm a millennial? <laughs> Dude, I didn't even. We had know. this discussion that I, I put as a best I of. I can never you remember. From, are you getting dementia? I, think. I swear. I've Wait, told you I'm, four times. I've told you four times. We're talking over. No, my sister and I are not the same. Yes. No. What year was she born? Ninety-seven. I think she's a millennial. We've had this exact discussion on the podcast. 82 to 97 is a millennial, but the 97 to 98 is a zillennial. That's I'm, impossible. So my brother, okay, me, I'm just and telling my you sister, facts. You don't even yell at me. We're all the same. We're all the same, even though my brother's 30. I can break it down for you. I don't, I wanted what to tell you about What year were you born? My, 90. Okay. Yeah, 90. 97, sis. What about your brother? 87. So he is like the older millennial. Anyway, who cares? Facts are boring. That's why people watch cable so news. So back to then, I, I sounded really dumb. Now I know. I'm a millennial. I had no idea. Okay. <laughs> so we're going back to the original Facebook. When it started, I remember being in high school and you could send, I don't know if you remember this, Ryan, you could send people to their Facebook profile. It looked, first of all, the platform looked completely different, but you could send people drinks so you could send people like little like beer icons and it was like, oh, cool. My, look how many of my drinks my friend sent, sent me. Like, look how many are on my profile. Like you could, do you remember this? You could send people, you don't remember this. I'm like trying you could to send people. I'm pretty sure. Like I it was like, instead of posting on their wall, you would like send them something. So you could like send them like. A cocktail. And it was like just a picture. And it was like, look how many friends. What was weird? I think I remember that. But what was weird was when you would send something, it was such an unattractive process because you would click on it. And then it was like you were sending an email. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? There wasn't like a chat box or like a little notification. Right, no. So it was like you were sending them like a rose or something. Yes. But then it was like you're sending it in an email with a little picture. It was just very 2007. It was completely different. It was literally completely different. Oh my God, okay. Think about how ancient that feels compared to that. I thought about this the other day, man, I'm hyper. There was never a MySpace app. It was only on a computer. Wow. Maybe there might've been one in 09, but it was never on the mobile phone. Wow. Why did, the thing is, everyone's like, whoa, Facebook, look at this concept. <laughs> but MySpace was literally the same concept and with when it was different... private it was private like why is everyone like whoa facebook but like myspace was already that 
I don't, it just had different features and it could have developed to what Facebook is today. Like, you don't know the features that they could have come up with now. Like now on Instagram, there's reels and so many different features that were not there a year and a half ago, people. It was just pictures once upon a time. And now we have to try to make reels. Tom yes. looked like the coolest dude ever. Someone you just want to hang out with. Remember him? Tom, Tom from MySpace. He'd be your top friend. The yeah, guy that Tom. he's worth he like two hundred and fifty every- million, and now he lives on like a private island. He is. You know what? He was everybody's Legend. friend. He was everybody's friend. He just seemed like a dude you want to hang out with. And Mark Zuckerberg, the way he had that bookshelf, and he had a, it was like a barbecue uh, sauce holding up the books. That's not someone you want to hang out with. Someone that has a bookshelf and uses barbecue. And I can already see how it went down at Harvard where like Mark is this like nerdy, like not cool person. Not getting invited to any parties. Actually, they're saying don't invite him in. Because yeah. he'll, he'll just take your ideas. That's exactly right. And I Oosh. could just picture like these two guys have this idea and like hang out with this other guy and he's kind of nerdy and they're like, dude, this guy's weird, but like, let's see if he can help us out with this. And then he just steals their idea. Like what? a And then ugh, what a jerk. It but is then creep- again, like, oh, sorry. Hum- sorry. <laughs> Should we just get it out of our system now? Like just, get wild. just keep interrupting each other. Ready? Go. Keep interrupting me. Go. Meditate. We're, we're going to do a quick med- meditation session on happy hour. Okay. I'm breathing. <sighs> Feels better. Are you good? I think so. <laughs> I don't know if we're ever good. No. I think even when we ask each other, are you good? Right. And we both tell each other that we're good. I don't think we're ever good. It's a loaded question. Happy hour. Happy hour. Hour. We'll be right back. This following segment was brought to you by Mitra 9, Kava, and Kratom Beverages. Tinyurl.com slash Hoppy Mitra. When you go there and you purchase the best Kratom and Kava seltzers out there, and you use keyword Hoppy at checkout, you can save 20%. Happy Hour. Happy Hour. Call Hoppy now. 856-49-HOPPY. Tweet at him at Ryan Hoppy Radio or chat him live via the Hoppy Radio app. It's time to turn Hoppy on. <laughs> Ryan. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. I need a breather. I've been up since four. Ryan, what, do you, what do you want to talk about? You got a little finger happy there with our uh, podcast board. I'm always finger happy. <laughs> Uh, like, that doo-doo. sounded creepier than funny. Yeah, but you you looked like you were playing the piano. Like you were like, doo, 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 pressing all the buttons I got on all our... The, I did them all wrong and I had to edit it. <laughs> it's fine. We got it now. You may listen to the podcast and think it was edited perfectly because it was edited perfectly. There's sometimes a few moments I press the wrong button. Welcome back to Hot the I've Hour on the radio line. Shut up. What? I was saying shut up to that. What? <laughs> I realized something. What? Okay. I cannot tell any more people that I date to listen to Hoppy Hour or that I do a podcast. I feel the same way. Yeah, because then as the, <laughs> as it progresses and I have more information to share, I'm like, oh, darn. This is going to take a turn. I was like on a day recently and a girl brought up me complaining about the Applebee's day and I was like, oh, I forgot I made a whole podcast about that. Right. Like I have no regrets, but... Yeah, well, I have things to say, but I can't because now they are... You got to not care because if they're such pussies and they're... Hey, Ryan. What? We don't use that word on this show. Thank you. Because it's the strongest Thank you for making me woke. (laughs) Ugh. I don't even care anymore. Like, if they're that offended because they heard that Alessia had sex, hey, guess what? We all have sex, and the person you're having sex with had sex with a lot of people before. So don't think you're the first one ever. Unle- I don't want to hear about they it. they didn't. I don't. Which is. You know <laughs> when you meet the girl at the party. There was a girl I used to know who, um, 
from friends I used to hang out with. And this girl was like a known virgin and was waiting till marriage. That's and sweet. let me tell you, it was it was adorable, that marriage and the, and the divorce. Uh, here's the thing. When you observe the actual virgin, mm -hmm. there's a certain energy you have when you get laid or once you're not a virgin anymore that you just don't have when you're a virgin. When, you, when you're a virgin, you're just a little more mousy and a little more chill. But once you get laid, you experience something that you've never experienced before. Mm -hmm. It's just a known fact. I'm not a pervert. I'm just saying it's a known fact that someone that's felt the sweet release is going to be a little different than someone that's never even felt the sweet release and at this party this girl was an actual virgin and there was just something about it where she was like kind of would like she was the type of girl we all would be drinking shots and she would sip on it like you're very timid she was just different and maybe she was conservative she was raised a certain way Love I ben I'm, shapiro i i i have things to say are you ready for what information i'm sharing with you no please don't hurt me what okay so I went on a date the other night. Yeah. And the guy's great. I've talked about him on the podcast before. Really sweet, mature, classy, smart. Does he play smart. football? He does not play football. <laughs> Although, well, no, that's for another day. Um, so th anyways, he's great. He checks a lot of boxes. He's great. I love listening. I'm, I'm a chatter. I love to talk. But with him, I like to listen because he's that... Great at communicating. What is he talking about that's so riveting? Or is this, you've... Hold on, I'm going somewhere with this. I was just going to say, I think he seems really smart because maybe the previous examples weren't exactly the brightest bulbs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's he's great. He's so great and we connect. I, I love listening to him talk. I, I can't explain it. He's just very humble but and genuine and down to earth but like smart and spiritual and intelligent and just all the things okay but here's where i'm going with that are you ready for the bomb here's the bomb do the bomb it takes me a second <laughs> it takes too long <laughs> hey learn the buttons and if you want to do it yourself <laughs> boop 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 here's the meow accidentally okay so second date we're sitting we're at rococo downtown st pete sitting yeah. at the bar having a glass of wine yes and he said, I love you. So now I have things to say. Are we ready? There's more to this. Ryan, you don't even care. Okay, I'm talking I'm to myself. I'm so today. nervous. Okay. And he, no, no. <laughs> I'm literally in awe. Yeah. Because I can feel for that man. Because when you when you are a guy and you want to say I love you to the girl, you are like holding on, on a second date. I'm not the okay. Hear me out. I'm not defending that. That's not a little too soon. But in my last previous relationship, I dropped it after like three weeks. And when you're holding on to it and you're around a girl and you just want to say those three words, and you just feel it in your heart where you're around them and you're really digging them and they're really making you feel good and they're really laying the pipe. And you're just like, God, I duh, duh, duh. you want to say it. Right. I can feel for the homie. He must have been like, yeah, she's grabbing my leg. She's really into me. I love you. <laughs> so he's, am i accurate you were were you kind of rubbing up on his body a little bit no no were you just okay, sitting maybe. there Cause, yes <laughs> no because there's a certain I was just being sweet like i was like hand on his back those or, moments when the girls be forget about sex what when you're out and about and you're on a classy date or a classy dinner or wherever the hell you are at Applebee's and you're walking out <laughs> and the girl kind of rubs your back a little bit and kind of tickles your ear. Oh my God, that feeling is better <laughs> than sex because you know there's potential there. I so homie that. was feeling himself in this moment. He's like, hell yeah. Alessia is totally into me. I like this girl. I'm finally over my ex I was engaged to. <laughs> Let's do this. And then what happened okay so there's more to it <gasps> so i was like wow um yeah so i should like for reference just say that um disclaimer yes he is not from the united states so where he comes from apparently yes 
You don't, and I've heard this before, like in my travels, like yeah. I heard people say, okay, let me get to the damn point. Apparently, like you don't date around. You find somebody you're interested in and you get engaged. And the engagement period is the dating period. It's the trial period, but you're engaged. You are committed to that person. So like he would ask my father like for my hand, we would get engaged and that would be like the dating period. So it's very different for him and his culture. Okay. Just disclaimer. So saying I love you to him is just solidifying that he wants a commitment with me. Whereas in American culture, second date, somebody says, I love you and you're fucking running the other direction. Right? So I just politely, I know we're from different cultures. We're getting to know each other. We're understanding each other's, you know, traditions and, and things like that. And I, I want to respect him and show compassion and try to open my mind to the new information that I'm getting. But I did say, I was like, that's a lot. And then he said it like four more times. I was like, we need to not go there. And I kind of respect him not giving up. By the <laughs> way, how much booze was, was in both you guys? No, I, just two glasses of wine, which is a, that's a lot. something. Two yeah. glasses of wine. No, on a day you're feeling a little frisky. Like you could just go bang in the closet. You, you're starting to feel yourself a little bit. I'm not we, saying we you're banging a on a great, table. We were having a great time. Dude, homie must have just been alive. He was great. I mean, because I know how that is at first. I'm going to tell you something. Tell me. He hasn't had sex in the air. When you're <laughs> that, like, under a dry spell, and then a beautiful girl is rubbing up on you, and you're like, I love you. I love you. I love you. I know from experience. I'm just saying, <laughs> this guy did not get laid you're for like last a dog year. You're wagging your tail. Mama's home. And when it's someone like you, and I, I know, let me see your, yeah, you you have long nails. So when you're touching his face, it has that little tingle where you feel alive. Yeah. You are probably doing everything to make his heart. It's like, it's like you have a bowl of brownie. Jesus, my mic's going crazy. It's like you have a bowl of brownie mix and you're just rubbing it. And that's the feeling. You keep feel saying it. the word rub. I don't rub my brownie mix. I, I'm talking I, about what it feels I, like I, when you're falling for a girl. Yeah. Inside of your heart, when you're really beginning to get into the girl and really dig her and really vibe with her, you get this like warmth in your belly where you're like, I'm going to marry her. Woohoo! Every Aww, guy does it. Oh, that's sweet. He's already got the wedding planned out. Is that how my ex feels about his new girlfriend? Because he is like, he was two weeks and he's like, she's the one for me. I'm like, okay, whatever, dude. Whatever, dude. Why do you have to keep going there? I don't know. <laughs> Hello. And now your mic's off. <laughs> I on. turned off my mic and your mic at the same time. I, I didn't even know to turn off mic. mine. I turned off your mic because uh, we don't talk about things from the past here. Touché. This is Positive Vibes Happy Hour. <laughs> Who am I kidding? First show back, and I'm acting like we didn't bash our exes the past 12 shows. I know, right? <laughs> no, but but now but we're changed forever. We are changed. I saw this in the news, and I was like, oh, man. Good for ASAP Rocky. Here we go. Rihanna's little one is a total daddy's boy. The music superstar reflected on early parenthood for British Vogue's March cover story, sharing that her nine-month-old son with rapper ASAP Rocky has an adorable bond with his... That's great. Uh, by the way, you know that's totally a life adjustment for ASAP Rocky. For Rihanna, she probably had 90 siblings growing up that she probably was like cooking scrambled eggs at eight in the morning. She seems like she was the sibling in her house if she has siblings and lived in a situation where she'd have a lot of siblings where she would be making scrambled eggs at eight in the morning. She seems very responsible. So I feel like Rihanna becoming a mom isn't that big of a deal. Plus we hadn't heard from her in the last five years. She became like a cat woman. But for him, he's getting into fights and getting pardoned by Trump uh, a while ago and all of that. I'm just saying, ASAP Rocky's lived a wild life with a lot of debauchery and orgies that he talks about. <laughs> and now he's cleaning dog crap because they have a pet probably, but he's cleaning the diaper for sure. Can you imagine that? Think about that. You go from orgies and all of this to cleaning up a diaper and that's the and most you can't go anywhere that's and the, the kid never shuts up it's the most fulfilling part it really is like when you're humbled like that and you have a baby that pisses on you while you're trying to change them yeah. 
and they poop on you and you're humbled. And then you're like, this is what life's about. You have that moment. You're like, man, this is what life's about. Laying in shit is what life's about. Yes. (laughs) All of a sudden you're like, this is what matters in life. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour. We'll be right back. I'm going to connect us talking from baby shit to saying that Devin Prasad is the shit. Yes. I had to figure out a way to transition from talking about cleaning diapers. When I tell you that Devin Prasad is the best life coach, fitness coach, and sage around, I'm a man of my words. Fitsagefitness.net, fit underscore sage underscore fitness on all social media. And he's got a mobile app. And he can travel to you and you can have hour-long workouts. He has changed my life forever. This segment's also being brought to you by Amir Academy of Martial Arts at amiracademy.com for all the info. He's got women's self-defense classes, MMA, kickboxing. He's got everything. I'm sure you could bring your cat and you could figure out a way to make your cat box. Uh, This is also being brought to you by Rich Keeley. He's the best barber in all of the Bay Area. RichKBarber.com. He's over at Salon Loft on Kennedy Boulevard, right next door to McDonald's. Sign up ahead of time at RichKBarber.com. Finally, this is being brought to you by Mitra 9. Go to tinyurl.com slash hoppy mitra and it's tinyurl.com slash hoppy mitra and at checkout use keyword hoppy and also check out westchaseprinting.com okay makes sense you got it were you able to kind of wrangle everything in because i don't know if i did 856 49 hoppy by the way before we go back to the show um you like my new facial hair i'm growing um love it you don't like it? I couldn't see much of it, but I like that it's come. I see it now. Wow. I was nervous for a second because you're like a beauty expert. Let me move them. Are Pat, we and, to- Pat and Aaron. Aaron says I'm not allowed to shave for two weeks and it's going on seven days. This is the longest I've ever had it. And I feel sexy. I I love it. I look like a man. It took 29 years. Almost 30. Happy hour. Happy Hour. Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Happy Hour. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. We got to make you an Alessia radio page or something. Something to organize it. Yes. I need that. You should do that today. Because I don't really want your previous account to be connected to this. Work on that, okay? Okay. Because you're the one talking to me about social media branding for the show. I... You're also a single mom of two kids, cleaning up diapers. I have so much work to do when it comes to branding myself. Like It's so tiring. It is. And I do it for all the other, like, you know, businesses I represent. And I love it. But then when it comes to myself, I need my own photography page. I need my own branding marketing page. I need my own happy hour radio page. I know. I need it all. Because now people are all? starting to follow me and I have like really personal things on my Instagram and I'm like, why? I think they're a listener and I want them to follow me. But Do also, they look like a truck driver? They all have the same kind of look. <laughs> I'm like, they must be from Hoppy Hour. Yeah, they're definitely 1025, the Bowen listeners. You know the like middle-aged uh, man with the long hair that drives a monster truck and talks like this when he calls a radio show and has a picture wearing his dark shades? Yeah. That's a listener of 1025 The Bone. Chris Brown is defending his collaboration with Chloe Bailey. On Friday, the 24-year-old singer shared a photo of her and the 33-year-old locking eyes in an intimate embrace on her social media accounts, revealing she is releasing a new song with Chris titled, How Does It Feel? Chris Brown is the most fascinating piece of garbage sociopath <laughs> psychopath, demonic human being of all time. You know why Chris Brown is the most fascinating human of all time? Please tell me. If he would have never, ever been a bad person, if he was born a good person, he'd be the biggest artist ever. He was on pace in 05, 06, 07, 08. He was being played on soccer mom radio. He was being played on teenage radio. He was being played on hip hop radio. He was being... 
everyone was playing Chris Brown. Mm -hmm. But then you had to be a woman beating piece of garbage and then we're done. You had success since then, but he could have been selling out the Emily arena, the Emily arena sold out. Just imagine if that never happened. Like, and then recently he's been mad that it's like sitting on his legacy. And this is coming. I'm a huge Chris Brown fan. I just feel creeped out when I listen to it. Cause I love his music so much. Can you sing me one of his songs? I'm going to take it down. I really want to take it down and show you what I'm about. And when you listen to it. I don't know that. I don't know any of that. When you listen to it. Yeah. Let me tell you, some of the lyrics are really violent. Like, I'm going to take you down. Like, that's like. Take me down to the paradise. Imagine now. No, 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 no. Think about it this way. Imagine if Ed Sheeran sang that. Or if Chris Brown sang that. When you hear the lyrics, I'm going to take you down by Chris Brown, it's a little frightening. Like, no, please. I, I don't want to be taken down. But if Ed Sheeran would have said, I want to be taken down, you're like, yeah, let's go to the local coffee shop. That's so true. Do you want to hear this right now? <laughs> this is the beat. To take you down. Here we are. Okay. You didn't even oh. allow the bit to build because your face is so uncomfortable. It was so uncomfortable. I've done that at bars before when I was 25. I would play a song and just be drunk as hell. And I'm like, God, I'm an asshole. I hope I'm not invited to the afterlife for the amount of karaoke singing I did at bars. People really had this. Like, I was an asshole. I was like, I'm going to take it down. People were like, you're not getting laid tonight. I'm just saying. 856 49 Hoppy. What would it be like if you're out at a bar, you're hanging out with your girlfriends, and then it's just me singing karaoke? <laughs> I feel like you're a vibe. No one really did. I've seen you drunk. You're just a hot mess. When did you see me drunk? See, you don't even remember. Are we done with this? That love, is a good that, song. Okay. That is a good point. If I don't remember seeing you, that was a bad sign about my drinking. <laughs> and why Mitra 9 has helped me go sober at tinyurl.com slash hoppy mitra. Use keyword hoppy. That might be a good sign that I had a drinking problem that, yeah, you have this memory of me. A lot of people tell me memories about my early 20s drinking. I'm like, ah, oh, I don't want to hear about that. Mm. No, I'm good. Nope. Okay. I'll see somebody I haven't seen for six years. Remember that time you were drunk as hell in Gulfport? Like, Not really. No, I have no. I have no recollection. Why? Because I was an unconfident 22 year old that had to drink to fit in, even though I fit in more when I'm sober. Because I'm not being an out of touch embarrassment. Alessia, it took me 29 years and a lot of hangovers to figure the hangovers to figure that out. I just look back at my 20s and I'm like, Jesus Christ. Like growing up as a teenager, I was like, my life's going to be like Seinfeld or Friends or How I Met Your Mother. Because that's just what you saw. Oh, How I Met Your Mother for sure. And then you look at our actual 20s and we're like, no, I want to live in a sitcom. It sounds better. I I'm really happy with like my friend group right now. What is so good about your friend group? I think like I'm I'm just like at a place now where I'm so happy that my last relationship ended and now I'm like Oh Don't, my god. I turned off your mic cuz you brought up your last relationship. You can say it without even addressing it. It doesn't even exist. Can you just edit it out then? You just muted me. So this new friendship brings to you something. (laughs) Don't say your relationship or ex. Oh my gosh. I'm helping you. All right. Well, I'm just saying it for context because there might be someone out there listening who's going through it and they hear from other people like, hey, look, I went through it and I'm out on the other side and it's so much better now. And like, it actually is like, I've never felt more at peace with my life. And I was so sad before and I'm so happy, like praise Jesus that it ended. Someone got laid. 
Hell yeah. I did not, <laughs> but I've been working on my friendships and I just had my friend Lisa come to town this weekend. What was uh, some of your favorite memories with Lisa? Okay. Looking back on your life, you'll Do be like, remember the time I was with Lisa? What happened? You know what was funny is what? Lisa was my roommate and she lived in my extra bedroom. Yes. And so when she, before she moved out, I got pregnant and then when she moved, anyways, I ended up having my baby on the same day as her birthday. And then her old room became my child's nursery. I just felt like that was like a. You're like the type of person that you make <laughs> friends with everybody. So anybody else. Okay. How do I word this? Oh, geez. Okay. I got to. Okay. You're, and please let me finish all of this. Yeah. Okay. You're one of the most genuine, sweet people I've ever met. I'm Aww. not just saying that. Hold my hand. So you're going to get... We're holding hands. So right <laughs> it's not like you're entitled, but you get everything because you're so likable. People want to help you. So if other people that wouldn't have as many resources have kids, mm -hmm. it's like you're an example of someone that should have kids. Because I've seen other people that have had kids currently, mm -hmm. and they're either your age or maybe seven eight years younger and it's crazy how when you're brought into the earth you have nothing to choose you might be given a horrific mom or you might be given an alessia it's unbelievable that's sweet of you that's the most fulfilling thing is getting shit on and hearing that i'm a good mom when did i shit on you no like when earlier when we were talking about our babies peeing you know what's and funny? pooping on us you know what's funny is like people don't quite I don't want to say get the show, but some people will be like, oh my God, you were really rude to Alessia. Like, oh, she wasn't rude to me half the time and not rude to me half the time in text. What I'm saying is that's what makes us genuine is people want it to be like all happy go lucky. Cause I've had people go. Yeah, but you're being sweet to me now. And that was such a nice moment. I, I don't know how to sit in success. Whenever I succeed, I go, oh my God, how can I make this situation worse at all times? At all times. We just got to manifest what we oh, want. Oh, that's so 2020. I'm not saying I'm not about the law of attraction or I the secret. I think it's a, it's a thing. If you don't want to use the word manifest, use something else, but it works. Like you got to start. got to go to work. We got to think about what we well, want. And I'm putting out there a really gorgeous Italian I'm, guy from Italy who's going to sing to me in Italian. We're going to travel the world and we're going to do mission work and then we're going to just own a house in, you know. Oh, what about me? <laughs> Nothing about me. <laughs> I'm just totally left out. Of Once you find a boyfriend, <laughs> goodbye. Alessia is no longer the co-host. No. Um, hobby hour is going to go world. I mean, it is worldwide. It we're really worldwide. <sighs> we got to brand ourselves. We do brand ourselves. I got to be better. Everything is so... Everything's so hard. There's so much competition. Can I have that shirt, though? That is so cool. Got to hit up my dude, Jay Retcher from J&Z, 12 to 3, every day on 95.3. Okay, WDA they need to Twitter. make me that shirt. Yes, they we will. We need to sell that shirt. Why are I we know. not selling? Why are we not selling that shirt? Why don't we have merchandise? This is such good end of the podcast audio. Like if you're listening this far down, I don't even want to hear you complain that they were having a show meeting on air. I never get to see Alessia. Mm -hmm. And I don't think anybody would ever say you're having a show meeting. But you know what I'm saying? Some radio shows are so buttoned up and do their show so perfectly with perfect breaks that they never have on uh, site meetings on air. You know what I mean? We're having a meeting right now. What content is this? The content is me talking about the content because we're at the end of the podcast. And I'm tired. 2023. Yes. Our radio show's coming. I sense it. It's That's coming. Good. Yeah. Before the end of the year, we're going to get a radio show. We are. Let's see how far we are. At. Only 48 minutes. Feels like an hour. Uh, five. We'll talk about asexuality. Paris Hilton is getting real about her sexuality. While appearing on the cover of Harper's Bazaar, March Legacy Issue, the Paris and Love Star shared that she believed she was asexual before she met her now husband, Carter Room. Quote, I was known as a sex symbol. <laughs> you were known as a sex tape symbol. Nobody ever said, oh my God, Paris Hilton is such a sex symbol. Sex tape symbol. 
sexual terrified me. I called myself the kissing bandit because I only like to make out. A lot of my relationships didn't work out because of that. I can imagine her being a horrible kisser, Just too. Just for those who don't know, because I had what? to Google this. What? Asexuality is the lack of sexual attraction to others or lower absent interest. That's in- what you have. Yeah, but I didn't know what that <laughs> meant. I was like, I need to look this up. Oh, but you're the you're the woke one here. I know. I guess, I guess I'm not. I'm humbling myself. The 42-year-old so- shared. But things changed for Paris when she met Carter back in 2019. Look at this nerd. <laughs> oh, I love, I live for her husband. There's, yeah, because she's been through like a lot of people and he's just like, I'm happy to be here. No, that's what she's saying. She hasn't. She's had no desire, even though people have, she's, have seen her that way. And he's really hot and he's written books and he's very smart and I'm into it. He is his dad bod king, man. I love it. Good for that guy. Good, good for him. I, I'm very happy for him. We're all proud of you. We all wake up in the morning and go, middle class nerd who got Paris Hilton past her prime. You have made it in life. You are doing he's good, middle buddy. class. He's, middle class. he's loaded and he's so smart. He went to compared to her. He's middle class as hell. Dating any rich girl. Like, it's got to be fascinating. Like, I've known people in the past that are that have dated women that were so much richer than them. And it's a fascinating concept. Yeah, what are your thoughts on that? I don't know. It's money. Yeah, I think so, too. I don't really care. I have so much money, too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think that's... I don't have time to think about money. I'm trying to earn it. I'm trying to, as they say in 2021, manifest it. Yeah, I think that... Um, just like women, like men with money, men also are attracted to women with money and people are just attracted to money. There's a weird power when the woman has more, has more money though. Cause like it's called judgment and everybody wants things to be equal, but then like paying for the bill is not equal. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I'm, I'm nuts. It's just fascinating how feminists want, and I'm not going down that route, but I, the, how feminists sometimes want things to be equal, but then like paying the bill, oh no, man's got to pay for it every time. I know. I find myself to be that person. Like I'm like on the fence. I'm like, yeah, feminism, equal rights. And then if I go out with a guy and he doesn't S- offer to pay or doesn't. Splitting a 50-50 like, is the way to go. Maybe in 2016 when money, when Meals weren't so expensive and money went a longer way. But ladies out there, women, whatever you want to be identified as. I offer. Honestly, any gender, any sexuality, any religion, anything. If you have two ears and you are listening to my words right now, listen to me very carefully and very clearly. You should not be paying for the other person's dinner in this economy to impress somebody to then be with you for the rest of your life because you are buying them things and then they'll just cheat on you and date somebody else with more money. My mom younger. had a really great thought. What's her thought? So the other day I went on a date and my mom's like, Alessia, like this is not how dates work anymore. You don't like go to a fancy dinner and like go. (laughs) Let's go to Burns. Yeah. You don't go spend three (laughs) hours on a first date. Like you do a quick meetup. You figure out if you like them and you're interested. And if you want to hang out, then the second date can be longer. Yes. But she's like, just start doing like quick coffee meetups with people that are no more than 20, 30 minutes. Get the fiber in, get the date and you're good. Figure it out and then bounce. Like what you, why are you investing so much time and you might not even like the person. And I was like, that's, genius actually like why am i like that's going what us and meeting? common folks are doing yeah but back in the day it was like let's go to dinner and i do like that too but also like there was a date i went on and i did kind of want it to end and then yeah I was you're like, saying that the, here. the waiter's taking forever because he's trying to help out homie when in reality he's just hurting out the homie by keeping a date going yeah. yo there's there's moments if you're really vibing with the waiter like let's say uh It's like another dude, and you're like, hey, bro, you watching the sports game or whatever? Or as the day would call it, sports ball. And you have a vibe with the waiter. The waiter will kind of like let you talk to the girl. But now if it's a bitchy woman, you're out of luck. She's going to keep coming over and being like, hey, you want refills? Just interrupting the conversation. 
It is nice sometimes when you're at a place and you have the waiter that, that's giving you like compliments and helping you out, uh, talking to homie up. He knows the homie's on a date. Right. If you're a waiter or a waitress, whatever gender you're talking to, you should never talk down to the person on a date. That person's paying money, hoping they find their life partner because they're alone. You shouldn't be talking down to them. You should be nice to them because then they'll tip you more. That's another point that I learned from the guy. I went what out a with. concept. Being nice to people. Whoa. <laughs> The different cultures, right? So, like, here we're, like, casually date, casually hook up. Woo-hoo. And then in his culture, you don't casually date. Like, you either know you're ready to date and <laughs> ready for a relationship or you're not. And, like, here we're, like, uh, oh, maybe. I don't know if I want one. And then you hang out with someone and you like them and they like you. And then they're, like, do you want this to go further? And then you're, like, I don't know if I'm ready for anything. And it's, like, we're wasting people's times instead of doing it. The other way, where like if we're not ready, just sit your butt at home and work on your dang self. I think there needs to be a discussion that this generation, the millennials, the millennials, whatever generation, honestly, I'm you a are. Millennial. If you have ears and you are able to listen, say or you're cheers. watching, or you're reading, or you're reading <laughs> yeah, a transcript that, of this, say you, cheers. Woo-hoo. You know what that's from? No. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. That was a parent thing. If uh, you have ears, say cheers. Mickey. I got a vasectomy. Woohoo! Uh, here's the thing. If you have ears, listen to me very carefully. If you go on first date hmm. and you're just not really digging the other person, go home mm-hmm. so you don't tell them face to face. Oh. Go home on your phone and say, I had a really good time tonight. Yeah. You're a really nice person, mm-hmm. and I think we need to see other people because I'm not into you. I've that rejection people. letter yes. is so kind. When you just ghost on them, right? It's like a bitch move. No, it I shows don't. a lack of energy, right. a lack of personality, no a respect. lack of character. Yeah, character. and then you go, why? Why does everyone ghost on me? Because you pull out the same energy. I think you should. I. Ryan, actually, I'm really impressed that you said to do that. Because it comes from years of being ghosted on. You begin to learn a few things about other people. Yeah, I agree. I think oh, I'm so busy. Even though I have three hours where I'm watching reruns of Friends while farting on the couch. But I'm so busy. Shut up. <laughs> Tired of it. And I'm not grumpy. Just I, I swear people. I'm not grumpy because I'm really successful right now. What I was saying is, I'm so busy. Oh, are you? Are you? Are, are, are you? Are you busy? And no, this wasn't even about anybody. Someone could listen to this and be like, Jesus Christ, is Hoppy talking? No, it's about everybody on this planet. Yeah, just be real with people. Like, have some courtesy. Have some, have some balls. Have some respect for yourself, too, to, like, be a mature human being and just tell someone just straight up you're know, not into that. Because when they're going, is that person going to text me? Is that person going to text yeah. me? The insanity starts to mess with the emotions. Right. And then you're trying to figure out what to think about when you're on. And you're like is me getting really dark you're like does that person like me because i could use it as energy for it or if the person doesn't then i start to like now you get the okay a lot of times when you're talking to somebody Mm -hmm. that process is a lot easier when you're not talking to somebody you're just like i'm watching people have sex on camera what the hell is wrong with my life but when you have another person you're like ah it's just a night off it's more fun when you have somebody in your life you're funny i'm gross (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> at least you said it not me uh, just kidding it's very uncomfortable to know that in my lifetime i have been in radio for 11 years Yay! And, my, and my mom has listened to everything i've ever done oh lord Hi, it Mama. Is, i don't even remember what i say mm-hmm. on this show ever because i don't remember anything so i'm never high but let me tell you The things she knows, I I would be horrified if I knew that about somebody else. I am a grotesque human being. I am a demonic human. I'm not. I'm I'm wonderful. Oh, I see. I'm great. Sip this coffee. Sip the, the melted ice. All right. 58, 52, 58, 54, 58, 55, 58, 56, 58, 57, 58, 58, 58, 59. 59 minutes in. Woo-hoo! Alessia. Yes. We have 
one more minute of this show. How about two minutes? Maybe go a second over. Do you have a final thought? Something that's out of the... Not about your ex-boyfriend, please. Nobody cares. If you can... Can we end this show with a, with a fun vibe? Yeah. What do you want to end it with? Go out there and make this week the best week of your life, everybody. Manifest it. Think about the good things that can come to you and all the abundance that surrounds you because it's yours already. Just believe it. Okay, babe? You deserve it. Happy hour. Happy hour. Like that? He's gone. Happy hour is now over. Happy hour is now over. Happy hour is now over.